And yeah, welcome back to Captain Reviews, episode number 11, and in this video I'll review the next set of uh, workshop builds that were submitted to my Creation Review Discord. If you'd like yours reviewed there, just go ahead and follow the link in the description, and I will review your vehicle in the order it was received. And the first build here is going to be the Car and K 1500 Loader. So this has a bunch of modules with it. So as you can see, it has a claw it has a container mover go through some of these pictures here nice and modular it's from as you can see these are all the uh, items we have the counterweight claw drill um, module attachment fork attachments from carnival here's the collection again the car and k 1500 loader Car and compact wheel loader specifically engineered to make material handling and loading jobs faster, safer, and more precise, saving you time and money. Built for ease of use, taking on the toughest jobs in the toughest spaces. The K1500 loader is the versatile machine solution for industrial and mining applications. If you like this creation, please leave a like. ASTR compatible with any of the A-XMCS attachments. Manual operation. Ignition key is one, space bar or one ignition key space bar to disengage parking brake WASD move when stop press S again to engage reverse W when stationary go back into drive up down to raise low in the arm left right to tilt the end piece three to activate the attachment two to detach the rear connector the two by one monitor will have control specific to the attachment press the button on the bottom left will drop the attachment refueling anchor is on the left next to the ladder recharge is on the right Specifications, paint, Hister Nugget Yellow, mass 6,563, 6, length 7.2 meters, 3.75 meter width, 4.5 meter height, engine water cool 3 by 3 cylinder, 162 kilowatts at 600 RPM, 980 newton meters of torque, fuel is uh, 367 liters, top speed 50 kph, and 35 in load gear. Generator mode, when the drill is attached and activated, the loader enters generator mode, gear is Lock to low and the RPS increase to provide enough power for the drills. The loader will remain in generator mode after the drills are switched off until the battery is recharged. Credits UrinWin ZE CVT transmission, edits and tweaks. Updates generator mode fix, generator power fix now provides enough to keep the batteries at full while drilling. Change the attachment indicator to a battery dial seems more useful. Do not upload this creation without my permission. And here's the Karn K 1500 loader. So let's go ahead and do a walk around and look at the parts. So first we'll start with the loader itself. Loader looks really good. Like the Karn on it. Nice and compact. Good detail in an XML. Looks like a filler there. This is neat using uh, door corners. Kind of round that off. Round off the uh, round off the fenders as well. Nice exhaust stack. Don't know what that does, so we'll shut it back off. Let's see if they open a hood or something here. Yep. Yeah, double latches for the hood. Yep, looks good in there. Nice motor. Nice looking motor. Cool to be able to go in there. Good uh, use of paint blocks on there for detailing. Looks really good. We got, uh, looks like power on this side. All right, let's look at some of the implements and we'll attach them. So we have the uh, counterweight here. So counterweighting uh, loader is important. You know, you're having a uh, heavy load out on a long arm, so you need to have a counterweight on the rear to account for that. Have the claw over here. And this here is the um, drill. So let's go ahead and jump inside. Go ahead and get in. Looks like that's the door handle there. We have some equipment, speaker, fire extinguisher behind us, uh, simulated shifter. Looks like KPH, gear, fuel, engine temp, RPM. Looks like a, you know another fake handle for um, bucket control. So I wonder if one's supposed to simulate the shifter, one's supposed to simulate the bucket. 
We have uh, headlights, spotlights, interior lights, hazards. So let's go ahead and I'll read the um, instructions here. So ignition key. Make sure the sounds are up enough. I can hear it. Uh, space bar disengages the parking brake. So we're revved up there. I might just not be able to hear it. We, got a, we have Stormark standard sliding, which, you know, it's a Stormark's issue. Uh, let's go ahead and press space bar. All right, that is, what is that? Park, and that is, looks like H for high gear. WASD, so let's back it up. All right. So it does the uh, stop reverse that I like, so when you let go of it, it will stay in place, and then you have to let go again to go. So that's a nice way to do it. It makes it uh, nice and easy to operate. So you just, uh, you know, when you want to stop, so for example, press W, let go, and press S, come to a stop. And then if I want to uh, reverse, I'll let go of the button, press S, and I will go backwards. All right, good. Uh, up, down, raises, lowers the arm. Left, right, tilts the, uh, you know, the implement. And three, activates the attachment. Uh, two, detaches the rear connector. So let's also look at the H menu. So we have left, right, arm, tilt, up, down, up, to parking brake. One is low gear, two is rear connector, and three is toggle attachment. So let's go see if we can't pick up the counterweight. Not sure. We probably have to attach it in the editor. I'm going to see if I can snap it in in the world, but um, it's likely that I have to attach it um, in the editor. But uh, you know, we'll see if I can't pick it up. Looks looks like it's probably too close to the ground. All right, and let's uh, go ahead and let's attach an implant. So I'm going to drive in first person for a little bit. Mirrors are good. I can see my mirrors. They're actually useful. I like that. What is this? These. This looks like the panel for the implement itself. What's that? Heater, work lights, uh, rear view camera, main gen status, battery. So this has an auto gen, which is nice. I'm gonna go ahead and switch into low gear. Goes to L for low. Try not to run over the dog that I just ran over. It'll be fine. Let's get rid of the H menu. All right, let's go ahead and grab this. All right, so try to align here a little bit. Connector helps to be able to grab. There we go. It's a nice fluid movement on this. Makes it easy to do multiple moves at once. You see all the weight block um, diamonds? That's often um, one of the ways to get an arm to work better in game is, or a uh, separate body is to add some weight. Tends to be a game thing to make that work better, but uh, looks and functions really well. Let's go ahead and look at our menu up here. So we have the drill, shows ore of zero, dump. Uh, what is F? I don't know what F is. Oop, that detaches. Okay, so that one detaches. So let's grab it back up. I'm just trying not to break this here. Straighten up there, guy. I tipped it over. All right. Um, that's an issue, but let's grab the claw. See if we can't use the claw to tip it over. If not, I'll respawn it just to get it going so we can test the claw out, to test the drill out. But uh, let's see if we can't tip it over with the uh, claw. All right, so here's the claw. So I this is drop, apparently. I don't know what F does. Must be, uh, I'll have to see. So that rotates left, right. Assume this is open and close the claw. Yep. As open and close the claw. What is, put it in park so I didn't have to hear that. Reset, so if we left it open and rotated 
I don't know why we're pinging the whole time. There we go. I shifted it back and uh, forward so it stopped pinging. All right, that's the claw. Let's see if I can't um, unhook this so I can um, get that tipped over. You know, it has those legs, I assume, on the front so that you can... Um, so that you can uh, tip it forward so it doesn't tip over. But didn't like the angle I tipped it over at, so let's see if we can't get it picked up here. There we go. So that's working well. Tip it back over. All right, so that's good. It rests on the front, so that's nice. Let's look at the claw from outside. Claw's got good detailing on there, some labeling. Good use of pistons on there. Nice having a multi-functional uh, spinning connector is cool. Now let's go ahead and we'll drop the claw. So it's nice and intuitive after a while I'll start to figure out what I'm doing here. So I'm assuming again with that counterweight that you want to attach it in the um, editor. You know, often you'd be using something else to help you attach the counterweight. Um, excavators, I think, use often use a, a cable winch. But um... all right, so let's go ahead and let's try to not disconnect this. I'm going to go outside just to have a little space and to make sure I keep the uh, reverse off so I don't listen to it. All right, so we have drill or dump. That looks like uh, percentage, so that's probably speed, I'd imagine. So we'll test that in a second. Let's go ahead, bring up the H menu. So three is toggle attachment. So as you see, drill comes on. So it looks like when we attach to those uh, the the little uh, arms they're used for, um, so that you could tip it. Come on. Uh, as you remember from the instructions, the generator will auto rev to, uh, you know, give us plenty of power to uh, maintain battery. All right, and so we can raise and lower that. We can drill with it. And of course, we're not going to get any uh, on there, but let's see if that's selectable. So that looks like that actually does the du the dump there. So of course, you know, we're not actually drilling something. What does F do? I don't know what. I'm curious, what the F does. We look really quick, see if I can see what the F does. Not seeing it on the instructions. I'm curious what F does. But, um, but yeah, this is really cool. I like this a lot. Okay, I'm going to shut the brake off. We can drive a little with it on. Of course, you probably want to shut it off. I um, wonder if work light turns on the front light of that as well. Let's see. F. I wonder if F is. I wonder what F does. What does this do? curious but um, you know so right now we're at hundred percent let's go down see if I can see uh, an appreciable speed slow down on the drill so I assume that's uh, slowing down the speed of the drill let's go to 50 percent so I can't really tell but I wonder if that's what that's doing but very cool that's uh, it's really useful, really utilitarian. I like modular builds like this where you can have different modules. I really like the cockpit layout is really nice. Carn Carnival always does a good job with that. Good XML in here, good detailing. I like how these monitors, you know, with the pipe especially, and they're turned, look like they're supposed to be, um, you know, they're kind of hanging off the roof sometimes. You know, in game, they look a little too blocky. I like the drive system's really good. Um, you know, what do we check? I'm just checking my engine temp. You'll, okay, I was just looking for battery. There's battery right there. Yeah, so the generator does a really good job of keeping the um, battery up and running. So this is a really co cool build. Um, you know, really good detail and really, fu really functional. So I'm trying to see. I must have the parking brake. So let me see if the... Um, so what is rear connector? So I assume that drops the counterweight. Uh, rear connector two. I'll go check it in a second. But so I'm curious. Those arms must pop out when I disconnect. So I'm going to leave it um, tipped a little bit forward, like so, and then I'm going to detach it. And let's go make sure that tip fine. Yep. So that uh, those come out and that grabs it. Um, 
So that's really neat. I like that a lot. It's a very cool build. Let me just double check, make sure this release connector. Yes, yeah, so I'm not sure about rear connector. Um, it's showing false on there. But uh, maybe it's, I can't do that. But very interesting. This is a cool, very cool build. I like, I love the modularity. The detailing is great. The, um, the, all the paint blocking is really well done. Good XML windows. You know, I don't know if uh, aesthetically Karn likes the, the diamonds, but, you know, personally, I would love it if you could select the diamonds to be showable or not. That would allow us to put weight blocks on things and not have them show. Please, devs, please. The drill is really um, aesthetically pleasing. The vehicle overall looks great. Um, attachments work really well. You know, once you get the hang of it, um, you know, like I tipped this over just mainly because I was, you know, I didn't know what the button did, but now that I know what the button does, it's very intuitive. Geometry works really well, no hitching on anything. So it's an excellent build. This will be fun for mining and uh, interested in seeing what other modules that he comes up with. All right, and our next build is the uh, Meyer Island Rail Services MOL-222 Heavy Freight. So we just have one picture here. And this is from uh, Flashgeist. And the vehicle does not have a description. So we'll go ahead and we'll look at this one. All right, so let's do an external uh, walk around here. So uh, looks really good, good design. I like these squared out, um, older looking units. Nice paint job on there, the uh, Meyer Island Rail Service. A little bit of detailing under here. I, don't, I assume that's just for uh, visuals. Looks really good. Looks like uh, fuel refueling there and our diesel capacity. Nice detailing on the front and the rear. Pretty symmetrical looking train. All right, we are currently faced backwards. I'll go ahead and jump in. Let's go take a walk through here. All right, so we're in the main drive area here. Nice looking station. I like the uh, like the little monitors, the angle. This looks really good in here. Let's go ahead to the back. Heaters, what do we have in here? Gear, oh, these are breakers, okay. So there's really no description or um, guide to start this, so I'm going to have to wing it. So if I screw it up, that is why. There's uh, no description. So it looks symmetrical like it could be driven on either side. That's nice. So I'll probably drive from this side. But nice looking engine room, little walk path here. What do we have? Clutch, engine throttle, key button. So again, I have to figure this all out because you didn't put a description. So it's always nice if you have a description there and explain how to operate something. So let's go ahead, track switcher, direction change, horn, throttle, speed limiter. I don't know what that means. I don't know what that means. Interior white, interior red, okay, and small keypad. So a lot of this isn't labeled. I would uh, recommend that, that you label stuff. So let's go ahead and try to start it up. And nothing. So... I don't know what that does. So, again, I have no clue how any of this runs because you didn't put anything in the description. So I have to kind of try to figure it out on my own here. So if I can't get it started, um, that's because there's no description. So I'll try here. But um, so key button, engine temp, nothing. Um, all right. That looks like lights. Brake, horn, track switcher, direction change, throttle. I don't know what any of this does. Okay. All right, so if I can't get this started, we're going to call it there. Um, you know, again, a little bit of description. You know, if you've noticed everybody else's um, descriptions, they tend to have some level of um, explanation on how things work. Um, that is always appreciated. So, uh Give it one more try, trying to get this started. We'll kick on a couple cheats here. So it looks like you don't have any electricity. So, um, yeah, I'm not going to run it with infinite electricity. So um, I'll kick it on for now, but, you know, if, if you, you need to fix the system so it works. Okay. So,
All right, so we're having massive problems with this. I need infinite electricity on. And I have to slip the clutch, so this isn't really functioning. Um, if I can't do the clutch 100%, then this isn't really functioning, so. So, you know. I can't go full throttle. It kills the engine if I go full throttle and... It kills the engine if I go full throttle, which it shouldn't. So I would automate all this. I would use a PID. I would make this auto generate. Um, you know, I also, to save some fuel, it should be maintaining battery. Um, you know, you have batteries here. You should be feeding it to a PID and making sure that runs. The problem is, you know, I need them for electricity on. So I've got it off now, but I need infinite electricity to start it, so I'll try to test it with the way it is, but um, you know, again, no description. Um, I needed infinite electricity to get it started. Again, all this I'm having to figure out on my own, so um, we have some cameras front and back. That's nice. Very loud. I'm going to go make it quieter here. We're producing a ton of electricity we don't need. So, um, again, I would PID control all of that. I would make it so that you don't have to manually turn off the starter. You have radio there, speed limiter, those are lights, interior white, interior red. I have no clue what this keypad does. Um, I have a map here. Let's zoom out. Let's release the brake. And looks like an electric throttle. And we're not moving at all. So I have no clue uh, what's up with this. All right, so I'm going to end this one here. Um, again, you know, if you want it reviewed again, go ahead and put it back up. Um, fill up the description. Tell me how to operate this thing. Um, you, know, you know, if you notice other people's builds, they put in... Um, lengthy descriptions on how to operate the vehicle um, without it, you know, you need to put in a little effort for to tell me how to operate your vehicle here. You know, I'm happy to go through and read it. If you notice, I read everybody else's descriptions and I, and I see how to operate their vehicle and I take the time to follow their input. Um, you know, you're leaving it so that I have to try to decipher how your vehicle works. So, um, you know, let's uh, make sure you put it in the description there. So just uh, if you'd like it reviewed again, make sure you uh, fill out your Steam Workshop page with some instructions on how to operate your vehicle. And I'll be happy to uh, look at it. Thanks. All right, the uh, next build here is the Extron Wizard. So let's see, features, easy to fly controls, radio, emergency parachutes, survival gear, Extron Wizard. Single engine, tandem seats, made by Thermite. Uh, thermite and uh, the Extron Wizard is capable is a capable single engine tandem seat aircraft. It's a lovely general aviation aircraft with forgiving controls and helpful features. Features the Wizard has everything to meet general aviation needs. It includes a radio for communications, first aid and repair equipment, and emergency parachutes and emergency uh, locator transponder. Should your time in the sky go awry. It has room for one passenger and absolutely no luggage. Important note, all warranties void if aircraft has been airborne or exposed to any air at any time. All sales final. Statistics, uh, airframe dimensions, length 8.5 meters, width 10.75, height 4 meters, power plant, 6-cylinder supercharged diesel, turn a two-bladed aircraft propeller, two 3x3 three three electric radiators, and two small pumps provide cooling, electrical, one small battery, one alternator, capability speed 125 knots and level flight at 9.5 RPS. Stall speed 85 knots, service ceiling unknown, range tested out to 100 kilometers, fuel capacity 760 liters, checklist, pre-flight check, perform visual inspection, I won't go through all that, but I will do it as we fly, but uh, it's nice to see a checklist, I, I like a checklist, also it explains to me how to operate the craft, again it's important that if you want me to review your craft that you explain how to do it, if I have to figure it out on my own and I can't figure something out, 
you know, I'm not going to be able to continue there. So uh, let's go ahead and let's look at this build. All right, so here's the uh, Ectron Wizard. So let's go ahead and take a walk around here. It's a nice design here. It's nice and compact. I like that a lot. Nice paint job. Tail number is a nice touch. Great paint job. Really like it. That's interesting. A faked rudder there. Very cool. So it looks like some control surfaces kind of, uh, you know, hidden there to keep it compact. Looks almost like it uh, has boots on the front of the uh, leading edge. Let's go ahead and we'll jump on the wing and we will check it out. So let's look at the... Uh oh <laughs> We have a hose going through the center here. Um, that's nice that we have the rear seat here. I like the tandem design. Looks like some equipment in the back behind the seat. So you lied. There is luggage. <laughs> it's a little bit of equipment. All right, so let's go through here. I'm going to bring up the... Um, checklist here and I'm going to use that to uh, go through so uh, pre-flight perform visual inspection we did verify fuel quantity so let's go ahead and we'll look at the gauge for that uh, where are you at? fuel fuel okay fuel quantity is verified verify battery charge battery is um, verified verify extinguisher on board it is Verify welders on board it is. Verify all axes are free and correct. So let's go ahead to external view. We'll do pitch. Do roll. Okay, good. It does have some uh, cool faked ailerons as well. And as you can see, we have the fins actually doing the work. Uh, and then we'll do yaw. So that's cool. I like how you fake them. That's pretty cool. All right, so let's go ahead and let's go back in the cockpit. Um, let's see. Verify throttle at 2.85. So let me find my throttle here. That's button, button. Throttle's right there. 2.85 is verified. Verify propeller is clear. Prop clear. Or right, here we go. Clear prop. All right. Turn ignition key. All right. It's up and started. Uh, RPS is uh, verified 2.79, so let's find that RPS. RPS 2.79, that's good. Okay, tax checklist. Uh, nav lights on. Uh, strobes on. So you wouldn't want your strobes on for taxi. You'd want your beacon on for start. Do we have a beacon? We do not. Okay. So I'm going to skip strobes. I'll do that on uh, takeoff. You do that for takeoff. Landing light is needed. Uh, yep, we won't use that yet. Parking brake off. Raise throttle. Um, let's see. Throttle is up, down. Brakes are space. Cabin lights, one. Push to talk, two. And emergency parachute, six. We'll try not to hit six. All right, so let's start taxiing out. All right, here we go. I'm going to do an intersection departure. And so, you know, it has ver raised throttle to 6, verify RPS. I'm good, you know, I can just do it without that. Let's do takeoff checklist. Uh, break, okay, we'll do it as almost like a run-up. I'll come to the end of the runway and uh, do that. So be brakes, so takeoff checklist is brakes on, set uh, WS trim to 0.18. So this is actually something you often do, is you, um, you do set a takeoff trim. Flaps down, flaps down for takeoff. Okay, let's see. Flaps, flaps, I assume here. No, that's frequency down. Where's flaps? Uh, I don't see flaps. Flaps, there we go. Okay, flaps, I assume you just do that one. Okay. Uh, throttle max breaks off. Okay, so it's he's doing a static takeoff. So um, I'm not going to do a static takeoff. I'll do a rolling takeoff. 105 knots for climb out. All right, so we'll do that. So let's go ahead and I'll taxi out here. Taxi a little bit faster. Ooh. I'll do a static takeoff. Static takeoffs when you hold your brakes, it lets your engine run all the way up. We'll do it as as um, as noted. So space is brake. All right, I'm holding space bar, but uh, it doesn't appear to be braking me. It might be. Okay, let's go full throttle. Let go of the brakes. I don't know where my speed is here off the top. Oh, 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 we're having struggles here. We're having struggles here. Okay. 
Having struggles here. All right, let's see if I can't get off the ground here. Okay, I'm gonna kill the flaps. All right, so let's see if I can't get this off the ground here. So we're close to the rotation speed. Let's do flaps. I'm gonna do as as I've been told to do here. I'm doing full. Oh, we almost had some flight there for a second. All right, so the bump. Okay, so that trim for the pitch is a little bit light, maybe. Okay, we're airborne. Um, I'll try to do another takeoff here. I'll do a touch and go. Um, let's do. Uh, there's no climb checklist. Okay, so uh, I do a cruise checklist. So I would do flaps come up in the climb checklist personally. Um, trim, you would trim as necessary. So I'm going to trim as necessary. It says set the trim. I, I'm not going to set the trim. I'm going to set the trim as necessary. Uh, Monitor engine instruments. So we'll go through those. Speed, altitude, RPS, temp, fuel, vertical speed, throttle. Okay, so I'm kind of starting to see where things are here. Speed. Okay, so my airspeed is the most important one there. Okay. RPS at 10 and engine temps below 80. So RPS, 10, temp. It feels like the gyro is always on. Uh, maybe not. Maybe it looks like it's holding it. Okay, that's good. Yeah, it looks like it lets me do it. So the gyro is not always on. That's nice. Okay, let's go down. Let's do landing checklist. Um, again, I'm going to set my trim as necessary. That's more of a, uh, you know, correct procedure is... I'll feel the airplane out and see what trim I need. Um, you know, set your attitude as you change speed. Uh, so, we're talking 100 knots for approach and then 95 as we flare out. Um, you know, it says maintain 100 knots, short final 95 knots. Uh, you tend to have your approach speed, you maintain your approach speed until you're reducing the flare. Lower throttle to negative and add brakes as necessary. Okay. So I wonder if that does any reverse pitch. All right, so let's go ahead and come in for landing. So we're on a modified final here. So it's a little bit stiff, but it's 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 definitely it's nice and it's user friendly. You know, of course, as somebody who's a professional pilot, I'm a little bit more, um, you know, I like a little bit more control. Throttle is a little bit touchy. Like I just barely tapped it, and like I gave it one literally one tap, and it dropped about ten knots. I like to see a little bit more of a granular throttle just because it lets me control my speed, but it's still pretty good. Like, I'm trying to get right on that 100 to that 95 to 100 knots. Like, see, I'm needing to give it a bunch of power in the turn here, so um, I have to, you know, continually do it. it. It's trying to continually oscillate me, which isn't bad, but, you know, it's a little bit stiff, let's put it that way. So, yeah, see, it's a little stiff, but it's... Uh, Flies nicely, it's just stiff. So let's come ahead here. I'm gonna try to get back on center line. I'm just gonna land myself the way I would, so flaps are coming down. I'm aiming at the aiming bars. I'm feeling it out here. I'm kinda having to give it power. It was stalling again. Here we go, aiming bars, flare, and pulling the thrust. A little bit rough on the landing, but that was me trying to figure it out. Okay, so let's try to get a, a takeoff here. So I'm gonna go back and we'll start with the takeoff checklist. And I'm going to try to see if I can't get this off on the runway. So I'm going to... Okay, engine stalling. Okay, engine was stalling a little there. All right, let's do the takeoff checklist here. Um, we'll do... So we still have the trim set. Flaps are down. Throttle and max, brakes off, rotate at 95. So let's see if I can get this up to 95. It's tough to steer on the runway. So I'm going to start steering it. Let me check something really quick. I want to make sure that the space isn't putting the brakes on full. Okay, so see, space is putting on the parking brake, I think. So personally, I would do that as a push. I wouldn't make it so you slam. See, brakes true. Okay, maybe I left the brakes on. Let me check it. All right, so I usually, um, that's probably my fault. Yep, that's my fault. Okay, I usually do parking brake. Um, I usually do a parking brake release, so that was my fault. I put the brakes on, so that's my fault. 
All right, let me hit the space bar. All right, let's go ahead and do a takeoff. So I think it was my fault that um, that we had issues before. I think we we're trying to take off the brakes on. So here we go. Okay, much better now. Much easier to control on takeoff. Trying to get the speed up here. Checking my speed. Speed's good. Okay, yeah, beautiful. So that was my fault. Um, I tend to put parking brake release. Um, that was just me getting into some old habits. You know, that's a that's a bad pilot habit is if you get into it where you, uh, you know, you remember your last plane instead of your most current plane. You know, so I was thinking of my system. So that's my fault. That's certainly nothing wrong with this. Um, that was me trying to take on off with the brakes because I usually do a parking brake release instead of uh, putting the parking brake on. So that's perfectly fine. Let's go ahead. I'm going to do a, a kind of a more normal pattern. So, you know, we climb it out. I put my flaps up. I'm going to kind of do my own little procedure here and uh, hopefully I can get a better landing. And again, it was flying great. It was just uh, some issues with me. All right. And so we're going to continue out. So it's right off our quarter there. So I'm going to put my flaps down now. Nice general, small general aviation airplane. You don't need to make a huge bomber pattern. You don't want to. You're in a single engine uh, reciprocating plane. You want to stay close to the airport in case you have an engine failure. So it flies really nicely. The only things I would change personally is I would make it so that my throttle is a little less sensitive. Um, I'm trying to, you know, I have to kind of, you see, like I barely tapped it and now I'm stalling. And so when you make your throttle a less sensitive um, and you decrease the sensitivity, it lets you get your speed very precise. Like right now, I'm in trouble. I'm having a stall. And the problem is when I go to add power back in, it's giving me more power than I needed. So I stalled on, on base there. And so we're in final here. A little bit, you know, jostly, but it's not bad. And so hopefully this landing up. Oh, see, I'm landing long, so I need to account for that. All right, so that's better. All right, good. So uh, definitely, it was a it was m mainly a problem with me trying to land with the um, brake on, take off with the brake on, but that was me. Um, I was following the procedure, but I just did not um, understand that it was parking brake on. So that was a me problem. Um, I really enjoy the checklist. The checklists are a nice addition. Um, again, you know, kind of contrary to the last build, this build has a lot of information. It really explains it. You know, I'm happy to take responsibility for screwing up procedures because they're all here and I can read them. So, you know, I recommend if you're going to post your build, make sure you have, you know, at least some detail and tell me how you want it operated. Because I will operate it the way you want it. You know, I will modify it sometimes myself. You know, I, I changed a couple of things that were more realistic to real life procedures. Uh, I'm going to try to get into the, uh, we'll do the shutdown checklist here. I'm enjoying this plane. So I just kind of want to you know, uh, kind of taxied in. So let's go, uh, lane checklist complete. So post-flight checklist, parking brake is on. All right, so that was, again, my error. Parking brake on is parking brake on. I do it at parking brake release, so that was my fault. Flaps are up. So if I go negative on the throttle, it kills the engine. I would, I would, I would make it so that it doesn't do that. I'd put a floor on the throttle so that the engine always runs. You don't want to accidentally kill your engine. Uh, nav lights on, I, I didn't put them on. I did put them on, okay. I didn't do strobes for takeoff, so that's my bad, not reading the checklist. Landing lights, I didn't uh, need them at the time. Cow flaps are neat. Let me look and see where the cow flaps would open. It might be simulated. So cow flaps for the... Oh, uh, okay. So that is, what is it? Open engine cowling. Okay, I was reading it as cow flaps. Uh, for those who don't know, cow flaps are little doors that open for cooling. So engine cowling is uh, the actual um, access doors for the engine. So that's a really cool feature. Personally, I would put that on a panel on the... Let me see if you have space. Personally, I would put it um, somewhere on the engine, uh, somewhere out there on the cowling, um, just because, you know, you may not want to open it in flight. But again, it's a very cool feature. I really like it. Um, cabin heat. Turn that on. Radio freak there. We can do frequencies. That's cool as well. Um, I can't go down on the frequency, so maybe they loop. Okay, it loops. So uh, your down is not working, so just to let you know that. I like the dash that it is angled forward. That's really cool as well. 
Uh, let's continue with post-flight. Cabin heat off. Okay. Ignition off. Okay, the engine's spooling down. Um, the hose is a little bit weird. I understand why you probably had to do it because you didn't have the space to uh, have it, uh, you know, go through the body. Let's go ahead and let's sit in our back seat here. So this is really cool. I like this. This interior is a lot of fun. I enjoy the interior. I like it how you did, um, what do you do? It looks like a microcontroller to give you a little head space. So, you know, your head would already be in these blocks if you didn't do this. So this is neat. This makes it feel, you know, like a tight aircraft. Um, linear speed sensor, huh? So just looks like you got a couple microcontrollers in there. But nice bit of gear on this. So this is a really cool plane. I like this a lot. Um, I like these little general aviation airplanes. Um, detailing is excellent. Um, flight characteristics are, are, are really good. Um, it's a little bit wobbly, but that's part of just gyro tuning. So I might tune the gyro a little bit to try to get it a little bit less wobbly. Um, get it a little bit, you know, especially a plane like this tends to be pretty stable. Um, just to add a little stability, that's just a nitpicky item. You know, on these aircraft, they tend to be a little bit more nitpicky just because, you know, that's where my, most of my experience is. It is. But, um, you know, I really like it overall. The only other uh, nitpicky item I would say is um, a little bit uh, less sensitivity on your throttle would be nice. Um, I can't really, um, I can't really adjust my speed precisely enough. You know, like I was coming on base at like 120 knots, and I did I think two taps down on the down arrow key, and I ended up going down to 80 knots and stalling. Uh, personally, what I would do is I would. Uh, decrease sensitivity so that I can, you know, maybe go down to from 120 to easily go down to 100 knots. Um, that way you can more precisely control your speed. And, you know, I have to plop it a little bit because when I take off the power and the flare, it's, it's essentially taking all the power away at once. So just a little bit uh, less sensitivity and the throttle will be nice. Uh, but really uh, excellent vehicle overall. I really enjoyed using it. It flies very nice. Um, Really cool detailing. I like how you faked things like flaps and the control surfaces. Um, really great paint job on this. I'm um, curious what this is here. Oh, the vehicle parachute. So I have emergency parachutes on there. But really cool plane. I like it a lot. So uh, thank you for uh, posting this. I enjoy it. And the next build is the MMT Blind Spot, formerly P-51 Spitfire. So let's go ahead and look at the pics. So it looks really cool. I like it. Like having some uh, fellow tail draggers. Nice looking cockpit there. We'll go through it some more once we get it in game. All right, so let's see here. So this uh, gives you a big message. You need DLC to use this item. It has the missiles on it, so um, you know uh, weapons DLC is required. Uh, it's by um, Spectralosis, as we see. A uh, mixture of World War II super props and modern munitions and controls. Works with within game limitations, but if you want to have fun, turn off engine overheating and turn on infinite ammo. Mouse aim only. Mm. Not, uh, I don't do mouse aim only. I don't do mouse aim often, let's put it that way. So I uh, am not going to probably fly very well to start with. So take a little getting used to. So that's interesting. Put me out of my comfort zone and uh, maybe I'll learn some new stuff. Top speeds, no payload, no wind, 285. Heavy payload, no wind, 240. Um, WEP on, no um, payload, no wind, 385. And um, uh, WEP is, I believe, war emergency power, if I'm remembering correctly. Um, and wind and a tailwind, 460. Uh, unless you have a really high tailwind, and then it's even faster. The higher the altitude, the better the cooling. Um, WEP uh, will constantly, on constantly, will overheat. Use wisely. So that's realistic. Um, you know, in real life, you do have to pull your your thrust back quite often. Um, you can't do full throttle a lot of times. In some of these military high-powered aircraft, you will overheat. That's a normal thing. It's part of your job as a pilot um, in real life to manage your uh, engine temperature. So quite often, you do have to pull it back. 13 hard points to use as you please, but I do have pre-made munitions. So I'm not going to go into the munitions. Um, you know, I tend to do those separately as different builds. But, um, you know, if they're on there, we'll go ahead and fire a couple off. So here's the link for that. You can follow the link if you want to use the munitions. Two light autocannons, six light machine, uh, six machine guns, rather. 
Lots of gadgets and gizmo. Just test it out. Uh, simple operating instructions. Turn on starter, avionics, and pumps. For ease of use, go full collective and then ease throttle until liftoff. Do not repost. Use as inspiration for your own craft. Use parts if need. Just don't directly copy. Feel free to leave any ideas. Report issues. Credits to the Cool Cat. Some of his munitions. And uh, Jackie 1379 is radar and torpedo. All right, so we'll start. Uh, go ahead and do the walk around here. So nice looking prop with spinner on there. Uh, we have, it looks like a simulate air intake, some XML, lots of XML work all around. Some exhaust ports there. We have our drop tank. Uh, wheel well for the um, gear. Gear looks really good. Nice design work on the gear. Um, use of like a HUD to mount the light and uh, XML light to attach. A lot of weapons on here. Looks like flares. Spectre TF-141. A lot of good XML work on this. All right, we'll go ahead and we'll jump up. Uh, it looks like XML edited glass on the um, on the canopy. All right, we'll go ahead and jump in our seat. Go through the H menu, A, D is roll, W, S is throttle. Up, down is collective, space is fire guns, one is interior light, two is chaff flares, three is engine extinguisher repair, four is free look, five is fire hard points, six is cycle hard points. So we do have mouse control on this one, so it's going to take a little getting used to me, a little of getting used to for me. I'll uh, go through the start procedure. It's uh, simple operating instructions, turn on starter, avionics and pumps. I'm going to do it a little bit differently. I'm just going to go avionics first. I like to see my gauges before I start my engine. I'm going to go pump. As you see, we get some intake pressure and we have fuel pump going. Then we'll go ahead and start. Let that starter run. All right, we'll go through the gauges here. So we have temp, RPM, throttle position. We went through those. Intake pressure, uh, war emergency power is there. We talked about that earlier. Landing gear, landing lights, service hood. We can go ahead and open that up and look at the engine. So, really cool looking engine. All right, we'll go ahead and shut that for takeoff. We have our radar. We have all our different interactions with our radar here. Drop tank fuel. Uh, meters per second, so that's our speed. Altitude, I don't know what units that's in. Uh, main fuel. Fuel liters per second. So I tend to put um, in parentheses what unit we're in. So I assume we're liters, and I'm not sure if that's in feet. Cannons, MGs, the ammos, hardpoint weapon, backup battery, battery one and two. We have flaps, full brake, uh, throttle lever for our propeller. I uh, have a torch there. Have canopy. We'll go ahead and close the canopy for takeoff. Heater on off. Uh, this is our throttle, and we can go ahead and with six we can cycle our hard points. As you can see, we can go through them there, so that's really cool. Let's go ahead and uh, we also have a sight up there. Let's go ahead and let's move our W. As you can see, we are moving our elevators. Um, roll is AD, as you can see. Ailerons go. Um, up, down is collective, throttle. I'm trying to see. There's nothing. doesn't show me yaw, so I assume yaw is mouse. Yep, it looks like yaw is mouse. All right, so it's going to take me some getting used to. I'm not really used to uh, mouse control. So let's go ahead, and I think the brakes start off. So we have throttle is WS, and collective is up, down. So let's go ahead, and I'm just going to throttle up a little and start to give it a little collective to taxi. And I don't think we'll need the full runway, so we'll go ahead and we'll do an intersection departure at the middle. And I'm going to do it in first person. Again, this is going to be a little hairy for me doing... Um, so that is... Yeah, it's going to be interesting me doing this with mouse here. So I am going full look, and I cannot steer. So I don't know what how I'm supposed to steer here. How I steer, I don't know. So I'm just going to take off straight ahead here. And I cannot figure out steering off the top of my head. And prop strike. All right, so I don't know how to steer on the ground here. So let's go ahead and let's take it back, and I'll try it again. I'm just going to take straight off. Um, been working on this for a little bit, trying to figure out the steering. Let's... Um, Let's bring this actually back in the workbench. I want to see how this steers. Tried this a couple times to steer it. 
So we do have a we do have uh, something rotating the tire here. So let's go ahead and look at it. So trying to find where it is. All right, right there. Switch box input. All right, it's not labeled. That's not helpful. So see, so just labeling things. What is that? That is. Yep. So see, this is. Okay, so this is just to retract the tail wheel. So it looks like we have no steering. Um, I could be wrong, but you know I can't really see. So we have that's just uh, that's our gear retraction. So I don't know how we're steering this or if we're steering this. So it appears I have no steering. So I don't know how to steer. Um, that's interesting. Okay, so. Uh, you know, you put in the comments how to how I steer this on the ground. Maybe differential braking, but that's not labeled. So you know, you could steer with just differential braking, but um, I don't know. So I'll have to I'll have to ask. So all right, so I'm gonna try to take off again here. Um, so it says go full collective and ease your throttle until liftoff. So. I'm going to go full collective here, so we'll go all the way up on the up, and it's going. Let's go ahead and not hit this dog on the way out, or try not to. So the control scheme is very wonky for me already. Um, okay, it appears that it's inverted, so, yep. All right, so it's also inverted for me, um, mouse control-wise, so um, that's going to be interesting to, as well. So... Not a huge fan of mouse control. It's fine. It's just not my personal preference, but um, I have to keep that in mind. So I'm going to try to take off again. I need to do it in first person. Um, all right, so we'll make another attempt at this. The control schemes, you know, with having, I don't know how you're supposed to taxi on the ground. So that's interesting. So let's go ahead and we'll go full collective, then I'll go throttle, and I'm going to try to quickly move my hand back to the um, mouse to try to steer myself here. And I have to go, what do I have to go up, up to take off here? Yep, I have to try to try to look up to take off. This is one of the reasons I don't like mouse control is, is, um, you know, it's a little, yeah, I'm not a huge fan of mouse control, so. Just very wonky to me. Um, there's nothing wrong with it, it's all personal preference, but it's like I have to look up here, I can't see any of my gauges. That's personally why I don't like mouse control, but again, it's personal preference. So, um, you know, it's probably a lot, lot for um, actually shooting at things. So let's go ahead and see, like, I have to go free look. I have to figure out what my free look is there for. And now I can look and select things. So now I'm going to go cannons. That um, space bar, I believe. Let me see. Fire guns of space. Yep. So let's go ahead. And now I need to go for again to be able to. Now I'm yawing like crazy. So, um Again, mouse, mouse control is fine. It's just not my favorite. I just find it very, um, I just don't care for it. Um, go ahead and we'll shoot at some stuff here. Oh, lots of guns. Oh, wow, wow. Uh, yeah, I'm completely confused on the controls here. You know, again, you get used to it, but it's like, you know, I'm trying to do kind of the standard controls of WS, and all I'm doing is increase my throttle. You know, and then with this to turn, I have to, like, you know, yeah, I'm not a huge fan of mouse control. It's just not my favorite. You know, it, it flies fine. It's just it's not my favorite. Um, let's see. So I'm at, like, half throttle, too. So, like, I see, I can't tell what my throttle is. I have to, like, dip down or go to free look to do that. That's one of the reasons I'm not a huge fan of mouse look. You know, it's, it's good for dogfighting probably, but I'm, I'm not a fan. You know, especially like if I want to follow a target, I can't even see my sight. So that's that's why I personally don't like mouse look, because it's just, you know. And then I'm not actually, see, like I'm panicking trying to find how to pitch down, and it's like just nauseating to me. But again, it's personal preference, nothing wrong with it. Uh, let's go ahead, interior light, nice red backlight, that helps. Let's I'm gonna yank some throttle back here. Flares chaff. All right. Um, extinguish repair. We don't need to do unless I crash, which is a high likelihood with mouse control. Let's go ahead and put the gear up. See, like I am. 
like that. That's why another reason I don't care for mouse look is I'm trying to do something and so nice gear tucks away nicely. Tail wheel goes in. I just I have no clue how you're supposed to taxi on the ground. So I'll have to ask the author how you taxi on the ground. You know. You know, personally, I like to be able to taxi. So um, I'm going to try to get a setup for landing here. Uh, I'm not going to bother firing the hard points, but like I am just super duper confused here trying to. Yeah, I'm not a huge fan of mouse look. Really, I'm not. I'm starting to cut some power. Like, I can't check my speed because, like, you know, I could, I could check that middle gauge is what I'm doing now is trying to look. But I have to keep, like, looking down. So speed is incredibly important when you land, and I can't check it because of... Okay, yeah, so... Great airplane, looks great. It's just, the control scheme is just not how I like it, which is fine. You know, it's just... I'm going to try... You know, I could put flaps down, but I'd have to go to free look and... And I can't do it quickly, so. So, see if I can't get a, a serviceable. Oh, there we go. We're gonna, we're gonna hit hard here. All right, and where's brakes? Brakes, full brake on. All right, so a great aircraft. Really like it. Looks great. Um, flies well. Um, you know, just the control scheme's not my favorite. Um, there's nothing wrong with it. Um, just not my favorite. I I like to be able to taxi. I have no clue how you can taxi. Um, you may have differential brakes on there. I'm not sure. You know, that's one thing you could do is add differential braking so that you can brake one wheel and that will help spin you. But um, great aircraft. I really enjoy it. Looks great. Um, lots of weapons on there. It's just not my preferred control scheme, which there's nothing wrong with that. It's just personal preference. Um, but, you know, really, really great aircraft and uh, I enjoyed flying it. Thanks for submitting. All right, moving on to the uh, last build for the video. This is the Sand Runner High Speed Trike. So let's go ahead and go through. This is cool. I like ha having some uh, little ground vehicles. It's cool to have a trike. Motorcycles are possible, but very difficult in games. So nice to see a trike. I like the design. It's cool. Created by Mr. G. Sandrunner High Speed Trike. Intro. Funny trike thing I built to go from point to point on the new DLC island. It can hold three people, go very fast, and is light small enough to go pretty much anywhere with no crashes. Instructions and other abilities. 1. Enter the main seat in the middle. Start the engine. Disable parking brake. If you flip, hold left or right. That's interesting. We'll see it has a flip system. Specifications. Aspect. Uh, length. 3.25 meters. Height from the ground. 1.75 meters. Max speed. 78 miles per hour. Fuel. 24 liters. Power plant. 3-cylinder air-cooled. Nice to see a 3-cylinder on a motorcycle-y thing. Um, I'm a big motorcycle fan. Player seats three cost uh, thirty-one twenty-three, so good and economical to move around. Never had it get damaged through driving. I'll make sure I put a change to that, <laughs> Mr. G builds. All right, all right. So let's go ahead and do our walk around the Sand Runner. So already see we have some XML work here. So especially, I, I love these tiny little builds. They can be incredibly difficult to get right just because. You have so little space, so often XML is a necessity. So trike design here. Motorcycles are very tough, so uh, it's cool to see a trike. Nice use of space here, as you can see. With you know, such a making small things is very difficult here. This guy, I'm going to pick up just so he's quiet and doesn't make that panting noise the whole time I'm here. I actually moved him way over there, and he came back. Um, <laughs> and so. Um, you know, nice use of XML to hide a bunch of stuff. Um, you know, I would like some miniaturized parts in game would be great, but um, great use of XML here. We have some exterior seats. This would scare the hell out of me riding on this thing, but, um, you know, as an avid motorcycle uh, rider and fan, I always enjoy a motorcycle. Really cool. I like the um, I like the exposed engine design. Good paint job here. You, you know, you have very little real estate to do any painting on this just because it's so small. I uh, did a good job putting some variety, make it look kind of Mad Maxy, kind of blend in with the exterior environment there. Using um, using microcontrollers for swing arm and a ladder for a swing arm, uh, XML so you can put stuff through it. So that's really cool. Um, that's our swing arm. Very efficient use of space. So really cool. Um, that's gonna be that's gonna be a necessity. XML paint blocks there. Really good paint job. So let's go ahead and jump in the Sand Runner. I probably can't jump in with Ding Dong on my back here. Let's get rid of Ding Dong because 
everything I do now has panting dogs in it. So, and in real life, Reddy's sitting right next to me. So she's uh, she's not panting. She's having a nap, but um, she, she gets in a lot of my videos too. So we'll try to have a dog-free video here. Uh, WS throttle left right is unflip hold to use eleven. Engine on, oh, I'm sorry, 11. One, engine on, off. I'm seeing double. Two, park and brake. Um, def on, so it starts on, I imagine. Three, a headlight. Four is reverse. So let's go ahead. I'm just going to, on the other monitor, we'll put up the instructions. Pretty simple. Enter the main seat in the middle. Done. Uh, start the engine. So we're starting the engine with one, not 11. Uh, we probably, okay, good. It just had a little stutter there as it started up. That's fine. Happens. Um, Probably just a little bit, either a little bit of a high p-value or just a little bit low of an RPS um, idle. But as you can see, it's starting to settle out. So sometimes the engine heats up a little bit, that fixes itself. So that's no issue. That's good. Uh, two, disable parking brake. Hey, we're on our way. Um, and so we're already running. So it looks like the clutch is engaged. Um, so that's okay. Let's see. Um, let's go ahead and... Let's hammer here a little bit. So, um, I have, uh, you know, see, Mr. G said he's never um, destroyed this or flipped it. I'm going to try not to destroy it. Maybe we'll see if we can flip it. I'd like to see what that uh, how the unflip works. So this is cool. I like the dual wheels in the back. You know, the engine sounds not too loud, which I like, which means, you know, it's good gearing. So if we're doing a good speed, we're doing, you know, um, greater than 70 miles an hour. Fuel usage doesn't look like it's um, going to be a problem. Engine RPS is good. Um, it's not overly loud. I like that. So that's a good sign that it's been geared properly. You know, uh, it's good and stable. You know, I'm hammering um, left and right, and I'm not having any issues. But it's uh, traversing really well. Okay, parking brake is there, so I didn't see that earlier, the little light there. So I don't know how I, I missed it, but um, that's good to know. Parking brake's on. Whoa, there we go. So I'm curious about this um, unflip. This is really cool. I like this. It's a cool little vehicle. Really, like I said, the paint job is really nice. You know, something this small is tough to get detailed well. Uh, you know, the nice thing with motorcycles and trikes and stuff like that is, you know, they often have exposed engines, and the engines are a vital, comp are kind of a vital part of the aesthetics of the vehicle. So, you know, really great job with the painting on this. Um, I like the dual drive wheel design. That's kind of a cool um, and interesting feature. Really cool. Makes me want to build a trike, and that's always, I think that's always one of the highest compliments somebody can give of my stuff that they've been inspired to do something. And so this build definitely inspires me to go out there and to do some more motorcycle trikey type things. Um, I love to be able to do a two-wheel motorcycle and have it function well without too much chicanery. Let's go ahead and turn the headlight on. So oh, there's our headlight there. And I want to I wanna see what I can do with this unflip. So let's hold it. I'm holding um, left. So I'm curious. What, so let me stop. Oh, cool. It has a tail light. I didn't notice that at first. So I kind of want to flip this sucker just to unflip it, <laughs> but um, yeah, you know it's it's very stable. I have but I can't really I haven't been able to flip it. But I'm curious. So I assume the unflip system works, but um, you know I'm not going to wreck your vehicle trying to just unflip it. So um, really cool vehicle. I like it a lot. Um, stable functions well. It's a lot of fun. Those I think you know of course are the most important things. So it must be. Um, I wonder if it's it must be front wheel drive. But a uh, really cool little vehicle. I love it a lot. So uh, thanks for posting it, and I've enjoyed using it. So let's go ahead and hit 2 to stop. So it works well. Even though the clutch is always engaged, it works fine. You can just tag the parking brake. You know, some vehicles, you 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 kick the parking brake on before you stopped, and you'll end up wrecking. But this is so stable, you don't have to worry about it. So really great vehicle by Mr. G. And special thanks to Carnival, Flash Guys, Thermite, Spectrolosis, and Mr. G for submitting your builds this week. Had a lot of fun testing them out. Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you in the next one. Bye.